Hi, I'm uh, Corinne Cash. I am an assistant professor in the Climate Environment Program at Sanovax, and I uh, work at the CODI as a senior program staff leading the Building Resilient Communities thematic area. I am Oluye Mise Ayola, and currently I'm an advocacy officer for a new project called um, YPE for AH. It's a project, a youth powered ecosystem to advance urban uh, health and well being uh, for people, you know, young people in Lagos State. My name is Sean Barry. I'm an assistant professor with the Department of Surgery at Dalhousie University. I'm also a practicing neurosurgeon in Halifax at the QE2. My name is Yogesh Ghore. I'm a senior program staff at the Kodi International Institute. I'm originally from India for the last 12 years. I'm, I'm living in Antigonish and, and working uh, at the Kodi Institute. I work in the area of inclusive uh, economies uh, that includes uh, programming on, on sustainable livelihoods, market development, uh, uh, value chain uh, analysis and development, social entrepreneurship, uh, and more uh, recently on, on future of work and, and, and workers looking at the impact of technology uh, on, on in, in job market and, and, and how uh, communities can play a more active role in, in learning and, and benefiting from those. At Sanovax, I, I teach a course on climate and people. So essentially how climate change impacts people. And, um, and I teach a similar course for Cody on the basics of climate change and another one on climate change and community development. We talk about health in, in that um, people of, of different um, socioeconomic classes, et cetera, are impacted differently by climate change and that impacts um, human health. I um, was fortunate enough to uh, be a, a Cody intern back uh, over 20 years ago in, in the year 2000. I traveled to uh, the Darjeeling district of, of north, north, northeastern India um, in West Bengal. I had the, the opportunity to work and learn uh, along with the, the local villagers there and um, the group that I work with, which is called Vikas, which was a, um, an agricultural co-op that mainly worked with um, local tea farmers, among other things. I ended up actually teaching in one of the local schools. I taught middle school biology and chemistry and physics. I taught uh, or I coached the local basketball team um, and then, you know, traveled around and uh, just had got the opportunity to learn some Nepali, to learn, um, uh, you know, just learn from the, the locals. And uh, really, it's been a, it was a really wonderful experience. I was so lucky to be part of the ABCD class in May 2019. And that was an awesome experience because there is a belief that nobody has nothing, that we all have something to offer if you actually can harness you know, I make people look deep into what they have, just like working in communities. Certainly my time with uh, the Cody Institute um, had a significant influence on my career trajectory. I think, um, you know, from a, a tangible standpoint, uh, I currently train two uh, surgeons from India. They're in Halifax right now working with us. And so that gives us a, a connection immediately, ex some experience in, in with their culture. I think, uh, probably more less in a less concrete way, but um, more fundamentally, I, I learned a lot from the people I worked with. I've tried to emulate their devotion to their vocation. The Cody participants, when they come together, they can talk about some of these issues, but also people bring in their own expertise and their own experiences. We have women who are nurses who take our classes and are particularly interested in climate change because they see a lot of, of their patients uh, in rural and urban communities um, who are impacted by climate, um, weather events caused by climate. We also have um, students who might, you know, work in a, in a refugee camp. So if, if you work in a refugee camp and you're already experiencing shortages of water or having problems with sanitation or trying to manage flood or, or landslides or what have you, um, adding the uncertainty due to climate change is just another layer on top of that. Social determinants of health, if you, health, if you don't look at health just as, as a medical problem, 
then I think all those social determinants of health, having access to um, healthy water, having access to uh, education, having access to a, 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 a sustainable livelihood means that you will have better things to, to eat, you will have less tension, there will be less stress at, at work and that contributes to, uh, to, to positive health. So, uh, so I think a lot of the work we do collectively, I think in, in different thematic areas and constituency areas, um, um, whether it's on, on, on peace building or, or uh, women's leadership, all actually contributes to those social determinants of health, which leads to positive health outcomes. Certainly 2020 has been a devastating year uh, for global health. And I think uh, many of the gains over the past um, several decades have uh, probably been uh, set back. I think the most pressing issue would likely be the, the growing uh, disparity gap between countries, certainly, and that's probably more pronounced uh, over the past 12 months than it ever has been. I think oftentimes we compartmentalize global health into, the, into disease specific um, issues. So, you know, eradicating malaria or, or HIV or tuberculosis. Whereas I, I'm, I'm more interested in, in, in developing systems of, uh, you know, strengthening systems that can, can, um, can address multiple, multiple different aspects of health. You know, with the lockdown, nobody could go anywhere. Um, people lost some of their resources. And then the, the health system itself, like in my country, didn't live up to expectations because we already had a lot of lapses before. It thoroughly exposed the neglect of the healthcare system and how it didn't measure up to, you know, taking care of the people as you know, they would need to be taken care of. Uh, the response from the, from the community, uh, from the community, um, how they look at health and how they access health. And that's where I think a lot of the work that our gradu CODI graduates and partners uh, are engaged in. So it's a way of looking at, rather than a top-down approach, we're looking at how these different community driven or in community based strategies that we really promote at Cody, how that can feed into traditionally top down ways of preparing for emergencies. So who do we have to involve in communities? Um, how can we harness the information that's out there in communities? Um, because typically when disasters strike, the first person to, to arrive is very often people in the community um, to, to help people. Um, our partners in India, like the Self-Employed Women's Association, who, where Cody has been working for the last 20 plus years. And as soon as the pandemic set in, like late February, uh, early March, uh, although they don't work directly in, in health, they are more into into agriculture and, and informal um, uh, work, organizing informal workers. But they, they, they saw that this is going to be a major health issue. So they, they swung into action. And in many places, the mask actually didn't exist. People actually didn't, didn't know the concept of a mask. So how actually you, first of all, make it. So they learned it like from YouTube videos. They started to learn how to make masks and then produced it at a scale that we can't imagine. So they produced around 20 million masks in a in, in couple of weeks. So imagine the in, informal women workers coming together to produce masks and then distributing it, not just to their, their membership, but to the local schools, to the local hospitals, uh, uh, and, 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 and that quickly. So just mobilizing that, that mass action at the community level. Canada and Canadians um, have always had a louder voice globally than, uh, than other countries of similar size. And I think that's because of the, our collective values are, are admired internationally. So. I can think of at least a dozen um, Cody um, Seva staff who came to uh, Cody to take uh, different courses. Uh, so that's one way. Uh, so they come here, they gain, they gain knowledge, um, new skills, uh, they build new networks, and then they go back and then they apply some of those uh, tools and then they, that improves practice. But that's only one way um, uh, how the partnership works or how Cody programming works. The other way is that uh, some of us actually go and, and, and do courses overseas. So I have done courses uh, at SEWA where, and, and I speak the language as well. So where they will have 35, 40 of them take the courses, which is uh, very, very customized uh, to their context, to what they want to learn, to um, uh, the opportunities they identify locally there. 
So then they, those people will further take on that knowledge and transfer it to, um, um, to, the, uh, to their constituency, to, to their groups. So that's how the learning actually expands. And, and, and when we talk about uh, how the, the numbers, um, I mean, it's going to millions of uh, um, uh, people.